I'm going to caution you. There, there's some adult language being used here. Let's listen in. Manufacturing onshore, in, not even shore, into the core. It's not about the borders, the core of Adidas. And Chicago is the core of middle America. We have to make middle America strong. So I had the balls, because I have enough balls to put on this hat. I, I mean, this Adidas thing made me a billionaire. And I could have lost $200 million walking away from that deal. But even with that, I knew it was more important for me to take the chance of walking away from that deal than to have no fathers in Chicago with no homes. And when we do have prison reformation, for no, because it's, uh, uh, it's habilitation, not rehabilitation, because we didn't have the abilities in the first place. We never had anyone to taught us. We didn't teach us. Exactly. We had no one to taught us. Right? So um, uh, it's more important than any specific deal, any, anything, that we bring jobs into America and that we provide a transition with mental health and the American uh, uh, education curriculum that a Jim has worked on. Larry Hoover also has a curriculum that he's worked on. We have Montessori curriculums that we worked on. WeWorks has a beautiful curriculum. The Waldorf um, establishment has a curriculum. Uh, we have meditation. There's a lot of things affecting our mental health that makes us do crazy things that puts us back into that trap door called the 13th Amendment. I did say abolish with the hat on because why would you keep something around that's a trap door? If you're building a floor, the Constitution is the base of our, of our industry, right, of, of, our co of our country, of our company. Would you build a trap door that if you mess up and you accidentally something happens, you fall and you end up next to the Unabomber? You end up, you got to remove all that trap door out of the relationship. The four gentlemen that wrote the 13th Amendment, um, and I think the way the universe works, it's perfect. We don't have 13 floors, do we? You know, so the four, uh, the four gentlemen that wrote the 13th Amendment didn't look like the people they were amending. Also, at that point, it was illegal for blacks to read or African Americans to read. Um, and so that meant if you actually read the amendment, you get locked up and turned to a slave. Again, so what I think is we don't need sentences, we need pardons. We need to talk to people. Uh, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I was connected with a neuropsychologist that works with the athletes in the NBA and the NFL. And he, he looked at my brain, it's equal on three parts. I'm gonna go ahead, drop some bombs for you. 98 percentile IQ test. I had a 75 percentile of all human beings, but it was counting eight numbers backwards off the repeat. So I'm gonna work on that one. The other one's 98 percent Tesla Freud. You know, so um, he said that I actually wasn't bipolar. I had sleep deprivation, which could cause dementia 10 to 20 years from now, where I wouldn't even remember my son's name. So all this power that I got, and I'm taking my son to the Sox game and all that, I wouldn't be able to remember his name from a misdiagnosis. And what we need is we can empower the pharmaceuticals and, and make more money. That's one thing. I've never stepped into a situation where I didn't make people more money. So we can empower pharmaceuticals. We can empower our industries. We can empower our factories. We can bring not only Adidas on shore, we can bring Foxconn to set up a factory in, I think, Minnesota, 53,000. Right. Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah, Wisconsin. They have 4,000 jobs, people making $53,000 a year. And one of the things we got to set is Ford to have the highest design, the dopest cars, the most amazing. I don't really say dope. I don't say negative words and try to flip them. We just say positive lovely, divine, universal words. So the flyest, freshest, most amazing car. And what we want to start with is, uh, I, 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 brought a, I brought a gift with me right here. Um, this right here is the iPlane 1. It's a hydrogen powered uh, airplane. And this is what our president should be flying in. Look at this chair. <laughs> We'll get rid of Air Force One. Can we get rid of Air Force One? No, you don't like that. Well, well we're going to have Apple, an yeah, American company, work on this plane with. But you know what I don't like about, it's not that I don't like, what I, what I need Saturday Night Live to improve on or what I need the liberals to improve on is, if he don't look good, we don't look good. 
This is our president. It's true. He has to be the freshest, the flyest, the flyest planes, the best factories, and we have to make our core be in power. We have to bring jobs into America because our best export is entertainment and ideas. But when we make everything in China and not in America, then we're cheating on our country. And we're putting people in positions to have to do illegal things to end up in the cheapest factory ever, the, uh, the prison system. I'll tell you what, that was pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hate to say this, Jim. Do you want to say something? <laughs> what do you do after that? You don't mind if I... You're, you're a, yeah. You are fair. Please, Jim, please. We don't mind we don't mind Great, right? Isn't that a great statement? Yes, it is. And it's so true. As a country, it's so true. It's very I've never seen Jim Brown impressed before. He was impressed. That's true. That statement is amazing, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to tell you, it's great to have you guys with us. And uh, we're going to go in. We're going to have some lunch. Uh, that was quite something. That was quite something. That was from the soul. I yeah, no, no. It's really, uh, really very interesting. Yes, yeah, please. So you, you had said of President Bush. Uh, you know what? Can we still hear the rest of this? This is President Bush they're talking about. Can we just listen in? I think we need to care about all people. And I believe that when I went on to NBC, I was very emotional, and I was programmed to think from a victimized mentality, a, a, a welfare mentality. I think that with, with blacks and African Americans, we really get caught up in the idea of racism over the idea of industry. We say if people don't have land, they settle for brands. We want uh, Polo Sport and Obama again. We want a brand more than we want land because we haven't known how it feels to actually have our own land and have ownership of our own blocks. So when you don't have ownership, then it's all about how something looks. It's about the patina, it's not about the soil, it's not about the core. So we focus more on, is somebody wearing something, is someone disrespecting me so I gotta, I gotta shoot them? Or the idea of someone being racist. You know, we talk about uh, police uh, uh, murders, which we definitely have to discuss and we have to uh, bring nobility to the, to the police officers and make them, because police officers are just like us. But this is this whole hate building, right? And that's a, a major thing about racial tension. And we also, as black people, we have to take a responsibility for what we're doing. We kill each other more than uh, police officers. And that's not saying that the police officer is not an issue because they are in a place, a position of power. Uh, but sometimes they're in placement of law enforcement. They need to be law power. It's force versus power. When you have, you shouldn't have to force people to do that. So a lot of times a police officer is sitting there, they're being forced to do this and forced to do that block, and then they force somebody into something and force into something. We have to release the love throughout the entire country and give opportunities. A lot of times it's just the overall lack of reparations that we, at any given point, we say, oh, this is racist, this is racist, this is racist, this is racist. So we don't have the reparations, but we have the 13th Amendment. We gotta open up the whole conversation. So, and uh, that's a move, one of the moves that I love that liberals try to do, the liberal will try to control a black person through the concept of racism because they know that we are very proud, emotional people. So when I said I like Trump to like someone that's liberal, they'll say, oh, but he's racist. You think racism can control me? Oh, that don't stop me, that's an invisible wall. Mr. West, what would you like? Oh, your question. You, you have one question, we're going to go to another question. Okay. I Mr. answered your question. I don't answer questions in simple sign, sound bites. You, you are tasting All right, we've been listening in to Kanye West meeting with President Trump there, a roundabout dialogue talking about prison reform, the 13th Amendment, uh, which, of course, uh, granted abolished state slavery in the United States. I want to bring in Caitlin Huey Burns. Racism, a little bit of uh, prison reform, talking about President Bush. What do you make of 
what we just saw. Yeah, a lot to unpack there. <laughs> and it seems like that conversation went on for a little bit longer. Uh, the fact that Kanye West, West is in the Oval Office is not something that's entirely new for this president uh, in terms of his relationship with him. Remember, he went to Trump Tower during the transition to meet with him. And of course, Kim Kardashian met with uh, Donald Trump and actually was successful in uh, getting a commutation of a sentence for uh, someone she was advocating for. And the president was very responsive to her, and he's been very responsive to Kanye West. And he points to Kanye West often as an example of uh, the African-American community, and he likes to talk about at rallies how he is doing well with various uh, uh, constituencies. Uh, what we also have to consider about this president, too, is that he, uh, for a long time, was kind of part of our, uh, uh, part of the celebrity culture. And uh, oftentimes, now that he is officially involved in politics, he has been shunned by that community, and celebrities have been very active in, um, in on the other side in opposing mm. Trump. And so this, he often and points to Kanye West or others who have come out in support of him to combat the criticism that he does get from Hollywood, from most of Hollywood. A lot there in that meeting. Caitlin Huey Burns, thank you very much for joining us thank on you. set.